Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here at the University of Oxford and today we are once again talking about disease modelling in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. My previous videos on this topic have been based around the SIR model which gives a set of differential equations that can be used to try to predict the effects a disease outbreak will have on a population. Now, of course, many things have changed since I released those original videos, with one of the more recent developments being the availability of a COVID-19 vaccine. So we can now ask ourselves the question, how does the availability of a vaccine affect the conclusions that we can draw from the SIR model? And in order to answer this question, I've actually recruited a little bit of help. Hiya. I'm Gabriel. I'm a particle physics DPhil student, and in my work in physics, we try to build models to understand how and why the universe works. Now, after watching one of Tom's videos, I learned about the SIR model, and I thought, well, what would happen if we tried to introduce vaccines into this model? Three questions that I'm interested in are, number one, well, what's the condition for an epidemic to stop? And number two, how many people do we need to vaccinate in order to get there? And number three, if a vaccine is not 100% effective, how does that change the equation? So I actually looked at the first question Gabriel's mentioned about stopping the virus transmission in the first SIR model video. Mm -hmm. What we saw there was the di by dt equation, so the rate of change of the number of infectives, which we had was equal to this expression, i times rs minus a. Mm. We saw that for the transmission to stop, this rate of change has to be negative. So the number of people with the disease must be decreasing, mm. so it can go down to zero, pandemic stops. Sounds good. So for that to be negative, we found that that means this thing must be negative, which we arranged to give us Rs over A was less than 1. Mm -hmm. And then we defined this to be this parameter capital R. Mm. So this is the, the R number that we're always hearing about on the news? Exactly. I yes. Okay. Yes. So this is why it's talked about, as, as you said, in the news for R to be less than 1 for the pandemic to stop and the disease spread to stop. So how is this going to be affected by vaccines? Well, you see, Tom, just by looking at this definition of the R number, you can see that there are three ways in which the R can be reduced, right? So that because there are three, three letters or three parameters here, which kind of we can control, right? One over A tells us how long somebody is contagious for. Mm -hmm. So the longer someone is sick, then the larger one over A would be right? Uh, and we can try to control that with better medication to get people uh, healthier sooner or to keep them quarantined and things like that. Uh, R is the rate that infected people pass the disease on to susceptible people. And we've been doing a really good job of keeping that down by all the lockdowns and the social distancing things that have been going on. Uh, but those are I think you'd agree with me that those aren't very sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> How can we not have to, have to stay in lockdown? Yes. So really what we would like to do is to try to get S, the number of susceptible people, down so that when we return to normal life and go to our jobs and go to our schools and see our families, that we won't risk the epidemic blowing up again. And that's where vaccines come in because vaccines can effectively reduce S such that the R stays below one, even if we go back to normal life. How many people do we actually have to vaccinate to make this kind of come true? Like, can you quantify the amount of vaccinations we need to do to reduce S sufficiently? Yes, yes, in fact, we can. And we can do it simply from, from this expression here. So there was a number floating around at the start called R0, which is the, the yep. basic reproduction number, right? Which, yes. Which is the... R, uh, S over A, uh, where this you have an S naught, an initial susceptible population. So this is right at the very beginning 
of the pandemic. Exactly. So that's what, right, I get you. Right. Yeah. Initially, because it's a new disease, nobody's ever had it before, nobody has immunity, so S0 would be 1. Yes, right. so that means everyone's susceptible, right? Anyone in the population could possibly catch this. Exactly. Gotcha. And so, so if we just write that as 1, so R over A, and this was a, approximated to be maybe about 3 yeah. uh, at the start of the pandemic, so about 3. So if we want to get back to normal life, we can sort of plug this in to this equation here, right? So we want uh, R over S, uh, S star, let's say, which is the number of people who are still susceptible after vaccination. Yeah. Uh, so R S star over A less than 1, like that. And then we do simple rearranging, less than A over R which is less than one-third, which means, so one-third of the people would still be susceptible after yeah. vaccination, yeah. which means we need to vaccinate two-thirds of the population. So the the three here is obviously coming from the r naught value yeah. that, that you've picked. Well, of course, there's a lot of uncertainty mm. around the r naught value for, for COVID. Yeah. So... Is there a way of writing down the, the number of vaccinations required for a general R0? Uh, yeah, it, in fact, it's, it's pretty easy. So instead of putting in the 3 here, you just keep, keep it as R0. Right? And that's just based on R0 being R over A. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say uh, that we want the people who are uh, still susceptible after your vaccination program, plus the people who are vaccinated would be 1. Yeah, right. so you're either vaccinated or you're not. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And then, so we can rearrange this to do V equals 1 minus S star. Mm -hmm. And then substituting this inequality, S star less than 1 of R naught, you would get, uh, you would need to vaccinate at least 1 minus 1 over R naught of the population in order to stop the epidemic. So that's exactly where the two thirds came from, then, isn't it? In the expression you had here. So when R0 was three, we needed S star less than one third. Yeah. So that means less than one third of the population was still susceptible, mm -hmm. i.e., we vaccinated more than one minus one third. So yes. we vaccinated more than two thirds. Exactly. And then if you were a bit more pessimistic, you know, with the uncertainty on the R0 or whatever, yeah. and you thought, okay, maybe R0 is four then you would have to vaccinate at least one minus one over four, at least three quarters of the population. I see, so the larger R naught is, the more you vaccinate. Exactly. Now, am I correct in assuming that here, you're assuming that the vaccine is 100% effective? Yes, exactly. So what happens if the vaccine isn't 100% effective? How is that going to modify our number of vaccinations required. Right, so this changes the uh, the equation, the inequality slightly. So actually this kind of sort of stays the same except we add a little F here standing for the proportion of people who have been effectively vaccinated mm -hmm. against the disease and that stays the same. It still has to be 1 yes. minus 1 over R naught. Yeah. But then how do you get this this number? And that is very simple. That's just proportion of people effectively vaccinated would be the effectiveness of the vaccine yep. times the proportion vaccinated. So if you had 100 people vaccinated and, it, and you had a 95% effective vaccine, then 95 of those 100 would be vaccinated effectively and, and so on. And so E there would be 0 0.95. Exactly. It's a number between 0 and 1, where 1 is works every time. Yes. 100% effectiveness and then 0.95 would represent 95%, etc. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then we can rearrange it, we com rearrange, combine to get uh, vaccinate at least 1 over E times 1 minus 1 over R0. So have you got some numbers for us then? Right. So let's say that uh, R0 was 3, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. for 100%. Effective vaccine, we need to vaccinate two thirds of the population, mm -hmm. sixty-seven percent. Now, if we had, if we took some of the numbers of the currently available COVID vaccines, let's say we took one that is ninety-five percent effective. 
Yeah. Right. So you plug in 0.95 here, mm -hmm. and that would mean that we vaccinate 70% of the population. Okay. So that's just a little bit more than 67, I and mean, it's quite doable. Yeah. Uh, but if we took a, another vaccine that was maybe less effective, 79%, mm -hmm. so you plug in 0.79 here, then you need to vaccinate about 80% of the population. It's nice to have the exact numbers, but I think the overall picture here is still saying that generally the more people we vaccinate, regardless of the effectiveness, is going to help in terms of bringing down the R number. Absolutely. So at the start of this video, Gabriel mentioned to us all that he was going to address three questions about the SIR model and the COVID pandemic now with vaccines being available. Mm -hmm. So the first question that you wanted to address was uh, when will the virus transmission stop? Right. And we covered that early in the video, which where we found that the number, the proportion of people that are still susceptible to the disease needs to be less than one over R naught. So that's question one. <laughs> and then question two was how many people do we then have to vaccinate for this to happen? The proportion of people that need to be vaccinated would be 100% minus this number, right? So you need to vaccinate at least one minus one over R naught of your population. And then finally, if the vaccine isn't 100% effective, how does that affect our calculations? Right, so that then changes this slightly. So V is greater than one over E times one minus one over R naught. So a bit more. So I think the overall message, that at least that I've learned from, from this discussion with, with Gabriel today, has basically the importance of vaccinations as just one of many tools in terms mm -hmm. of combating the pandemic. So we've seen that, that vaccinations are certainly going to help us to return to normal life sooner, but it's still important to reduce R through the other measures, yes, such as socially distancing, lockdowns, etc. Yep. Thank you everyone for watching and a huge thank you to Gabriel for sharing with us his modelling expertise in this video. Do check out his YouTube channel, PP PhD, to find out what it's like being a particle physicist. And remember, if you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel Tom Rocks Maths. Stay safe out there everyone and I'll see you all very soon.